He'll put the ball in it. Erlin, thank you for joining us between the lines. This is the competition that Manchester City signed you for. Um, what, what type of pressure is on your shoulders this week leading up to this big game? No, it's pressure, of course. Uh, it's been pressure ever since I, since I signed for City. Um, but I like it. Uh, and uh, it's about trying to, to turn it into something positive and try to, to enjoy, enjoy the game, basically. You come across as someone who doesn't feel pressure. When I look at you and I see you behind the scenes, some of the footage, even on the pitch, um, and that transition to the Premier League from Dortmund here to Manchester City, have you found it easy? 52 goals in 52 games, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course it's not easy. Uh, but easier uh, than you maybe anticipated? <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I, I knew the team really well. When I came here, I've been watching City for as long as I can remember. So the year before, they scored 100 goals. So <laughs> for me as a striker to come into to City scoring goals, I knew I would do it. But of course, I didn't expect to score this many goals. Mm. So, so when you came here, what was the thing that made you come to Man City? Obviously, you've got family ties here. Your, your dad played here before. You said you've watched Man City for years. What was the, the real big key things that made you come to this football club at the beginning? Because some people say, no, oh, is it the right fit and whatnot? Yeah, no, for, for, for me, f the football Pep and City's been playing is, is unreal. You know, everyone knows it. It's the most beautiful football. Uh, and everyone knows it, and I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, and I felt I, I, it could be a really good fit. Uh, and I felt also the trust with the people I spoke with, you know, from a bit higher. Uh, and that was something I wanted to be a part of. Uh, and also with Pep, of course. Uh, I, you know, people say this and that of him, but in the end, he's the best coach, you know. And uh, then with the best coach, to to be able to experience to train with him was something I wanted, uh, and to work with him every single day was also a nice challenge and something that I I wanted to experience and to do. So that was also a thing, and also the quality in the in the every uh, every place in the club when it comes to physios, trainers. And of course, players as well, you know, that's also a really important thing. You, you spoke about Pep there and his ideas and they're brilliant and everyone obviously marvels at how well he does and the ideas that he comes are always innovative and new. Um, what, what's he brought out of you that maybe you didn't expect? For me, it's really, it's about the small details, you know, in the games, how to move, when to move, maybe it depends on the opponent, of course, because everyone plays different. Uh, but it really is about... The small details, uh, it's difficult to say now, but against this team, maybe do this mm. and do this different uh, in the next game. It's these kind of small things. And for me, when I came here, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm still young. I'm still a guy that's going to develop for the next, for a long time, you know. I'm still 22, so I, I'm still going to develop, you know, and, uh, and that's... Uh, Something I also think of, and I, th I feel I develop really good here, uh, both as a person and as a player. And uh, for me, in the end, that's the most important thing. 52 goals, 52 games. Do you look at yourself, and I see a confidence in the way you even carry yourself. Do you look at yourself and go, I'm, I'm the best number nine in the world? <laughs> I think it's important to, to speak good about yourself, to yeah. yourself. I think that's an important thing. But in the end, it's not about me to judge that. Uh, I know what I've been doing so far this season. There's one game left, so uh, so let's uh, still uh, have the, the feet on the ground. I, I don't want to answer this. Uh, you, you know how it is. Uh, I didn't expect you to, don't worry. Uh, nah, so uh, one of them for sure. Mm. Right, well, listen, I'm not going to embarrass you no more. Let's break down your season this season uh, at Manchester City. And you look at this here, and you look at these goals, man. Did you expect to score so many in such a condensed area like this? Yeah, that's where everyone is scoring most of the goals. So for me, it's about being around there. And, you know, uh, it's a good thing to be good at tapping balls in. Mm. You know, uh, take an example against Leipzig in Champions League. Uh, 
you know, the foot just, the ball just came to my to my feet, and I just shoot it in. I didn't think. Is this what Pep wanted from you? Yeah, of course. Last season, I watched so many times the crosses went through the the whole uh, the whole box, and no one were there. So I was like, imagine myself being there. I would <laughs> I would slide that in, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking a bit like that when I came here. I'm not uh, the one that's gonna create chances. I have my role in the team and that's this, yeah, exactly. you know. Uh, so that's my, my job really, to, to uh, help the team put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. You mentioned uh, you saw a lot of the games that City played and you saw the chances they're creating. You can imagine yourself there. Do you watch a lot of tape? Because a lot of young players, it's a, it's a really important part, I think, of developing and improving. Do you do that a lot? No, I don't watch my, my games at all, actually. Uh, okay. I try to think of the next game. I don't try to think of too much uh, what I did, what I did wrong and everything. I try to, to attack the next game. Uh, I did it a bit when I was younger, but for me, uh, I was overthinking a bit when I, when I did it, so I stopped doing it. And, uh, you don't watch opponents? You don't watch stuff no, like I, don't, I don't watch uh, really anyone. I, I try to just focus on the next game and to to don't think what happened, but what's going to happen. Let's look at your, your goals, man, and, and uh, all of these are one touch. This is the type of goal that I expected you to score loads of these goals, like this, running through, because I'd seen you do so many of these with, with Dortmund, this man on the board, De Bruyne. This pass is maybe the best pass I've ever seen or I ever <laughs> got, because I, I, I only had to run around the ball and to put it in the back of the net. I didn't have to do anything. The pace is just perfect. When he gets the ball there and he's and he's looking, do you do do you even think about anything? Do you just know the ball's coming now? No, when Rodri played the ball to Kevin, I knew I was gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't expect it to be that good. Mm. I expected to maybe finish with my right foot. Depend, of course, depends on how the ball was. Do you but do you speak to him about it? And or have you, or even before this game, the season starting, this is how I want the ball. I need the ball like this. Or is it just a natural? Yeah, we. I mean, we trained a couple of weeks together. We trained a couple of weeks together. So, uh, and also, I've been watching him for many years. So I know mm. what he's doing, and it's mm. just in his blood, passing these balls. You know, you remember my goal against uh, against uh, United at home when I sl I slide it in. Mm. These balls, we don't speak about this. I just know, I know it's gonna happen if I'm there. You mm. know, uh, and that's also my job. Getting these balls in the back of the net when mm -hmm. he passes these perfect kind of balls. You must have been licking your lips when you signed, man, because these balls are coming in a lot, and these runs across the ball. That's, they're poachers finishes. These got these goals. One touch. This is I like another this as De Bruyne well. one. Do you know what I love about this? This is where I think that you're. You remind me of more of old school. You've got players there. Here you are, in there. Two or three players around you. There's only one thing in your mind there and that is to break your neck to get there. Mm -hmm. Because you know this guy on the ball is going to hit this space here. Huh? Am I right? Yeah, no, it's true. And look, Kevin, I don't think he looks. I think he just knows that perfectly. Mm. And that's why I also was so happy when I, uh, I scored, <laughs> because this is something... I love these goals, because uh, for me it's about sprinting and being in front of the centre-backs, mm. of course, and to, to finish it, of course. He's so good putting it in front, in front of the keeper and in back of the the centre backs. Yeah, you know, the space. small small yeah. space. That's what he's so good at, and uh, that's where I should be. Uh, have, have you watched players? Have you had any idols that you've watched in those areas, especially when in in, in and around the box movements, where to be, etc., and the way they finished? Did, were there any idols or people you watched? No, for, for me, the best at this is I think uh, Ronaldo, Cristiano, mm. because he takes a movement in games and so on uh, and also him with the timing and with the finishing that's also why he's been scoring so many goals of course mm, so a little that. bit on him i love that this goal uh, interests me as well some some fours you see when they pass it and they don't get it back they go they go there because you, you you maybe want the ball here a lot of strikers want that ball return yeah. in there for you it doesn't come but i like this is what i love about the way you play it doesn't come you readdress your position, mm -hmm. get yourself back on side, and you get your luck then, you know? Yeah, and this is also a, just a normal tapping, but it's good that you show that uh, there's a bit behind the tapping as well, uh, <laughs> because uh, 
Yeah, and I also this one I also knew was not offside because I was watching the the centre back. I just tried to get in on on side to to be on the on the good side in case of a rebound, of course. This, this, this type of ball, this is the type of pass that Man City didn't have before you came. They, they would have been going here, ticker tacker, small passes maybe, longer passes, but this pass into you, into that area, was never, ever, ever a consideration. But now with you, this is the other plan they got, they've got plan B. Sometimes it's just about putting the ball in. And, and everything can happen, you know. Mm. Just with in this game when John, you remember when he shot as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S anything can happen, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, this. Uh, it's a, it's a fantastic Sorry. goal. I love this goal. <laughs> <laughs> what a ball that is by Cancelo! Oh, I love this goal as well. <laughs> Alvarez. The target is Stones. This one also nice. Touch <laughs> <laughs> from Foden. Holland! The way that Man City are playing now, they can only do this because you've come here. The way they've been able to adapt, I think, which makes them so much more difficult to play against. It was just all ticker tacker, perfect style of football, where now they can play over longer distances and really impact the game. And this clip here was was a telling clip for me because Pep Guardiola spoke to you, didn't he? And you can tell me what he said, but I saw him gesturing to you about bringing the defender who's with you into this area to create that big space in behind here. This is, uh, you said it exactly because this was exactly what I said. I think I... This game as well. This is what they could never do. They couldn't do this. They couldn't go from back to front. But now you, there, there's something different that they can do. Did you expect this to be the case? That they would play longer to you, or did you think it was always going to be short balls to you? No, I didn't expect this, uh, but I kind of had a feeling when people, and also if we struggle a bit in the games, I can win the duel, and if Kevin comes in behind me, then uh, mm. it's mm. possible. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that for a defender is a nightmare, man. But, here, but these are, what, I, what I love about this, that was my Munich away. Massive yeah. game, especially for you personally coming from Germany. Here, Arsenal, you're fighting for the league. <coughs> Massive games. Again, things, they change in games and all of a sudden, come on, come straight into me. And this is the area of the game that I don't think anybody considered, the way you can bring people into the game. Is that something you're working on as well? Yeah, of course, I work on it. And uh, yeah, you spoke about the goals, but they also have a couple of assists. And this is, uh, we knew Arsenal was going to come man against man here. Man against man against this team at Etihad is not, it's not easy. And when we can do this, it also makes the team even more dangerous because they can go long or short. Mm. Normally they go short, but surprised with this and Kevin comes <laughs> after me is also a good way of playing. Everyone's always asking me, because I play centre-back, how would you deal with Erlen? Um, what should defenders do? And I was saying a lot of the time, it seems to me players aren't coming up against you being physical enough sometimes, but Rudiger, started to do this. Um, I, think, I think I saw Ben Godfrey at Everton doing it with you and you two were getting into it a little bit. Do you, do you love that? Do you like that? The thing is, in this game as well, I had the chances. Mm. So on a good day, I would be, if you would show all the chances here, I would be, I could easily have been scoring two goals in this game. Mm. I didn't, of course. Uh, Aggressive. Yeah, this is okay. I get a free kick, so no problem. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, yeah, they did it good. Uh, I think if we played a bit different, like we did a bit more at home with the, with the centre-backs, uh, this was also good. You don't mind that, though. With uh, John and Gundo driving a bit more with the ball, mm. together with um, Rodri, I think we would be punishing them even more. Uh, mm. But it was a difficult game. They did it good. All respect to them. Uh, I think they, they made two centre-backs play against you. It wasn't just the one. One comes yeah, and one covers and, and they've done it well together. And I think then, you need that. And then it becomes more space for the others. So I don't mind this. 
That's good. You like the fight. And this. <laughs> what want, no, I don't know if he wants to do this. Uh, he didn't do it in the second game, though. I don't know why. But uh, the thing is, I, I, I like it. Mm. You know, I. When I, I remember when I was coming to England, yeah, it's going to be so physical and, and so on. And it's true. It's more physical than the Bundesliga. Mm -hmm. And I also like getting a bit uh, blue toes feeling uh, and pumping a bit after the games, you know. I, I don't mind this. Uh, mm. So there's also something that pumps me up a bit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't really mind. Mm. But uh, most difficult, uh, we struggled at Anfield, I remember. Van Dijk, I always said it, I, I think he's so good. Mm. Uh, but the good thing also about it is that I'm meeting Ruben Diaz, Akanji, Ake in training every, every single day. So a training is not easy as well, you know, that's a, and that's a really good thing. So Van Dijk's the hardest you've played against? Yeah, I think so. He's, he was uh, so good. Of course, Madrid away was also really difficult. I had two men against me all the time. Uh, so it was not easy, but Van Dijk is, uh, is uh, I like him a lot. I played a lot again against him, and he's, he's a bit different, he's really isn't he? As well, he doesn't. He's not as uh, in terms of contact. He'll maybe stand off and read things a little bit more. Yeah, and he's smart, fast, and in the air is just unreal as well. So before you go into Milan, what are you anticipating? The Italian, old Italian way, good, solid, hard defenders, tough to get, tough game. How, how, how are you going to combat the, the way that they approach the game with you? No, I think we have to try to do the same. Uh, we're going to have a lot of ball. We're going to have to create things. And um, I'm going to try to be inside the 16 meter and try to tap in the goal would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney was a striker I played with who loved a lot of touches. If he didn't get a lot of touches, still scored a couple of goals, you'd be so unhappy. I'm not involved in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't come across like that to me. You come across like if you have six, seven, eight touches and still score, you're still going crazy. Yeah, because look at the players we have. You with Grealish, uh, De Bruyne, Bernardo. They are the ones that should contact the ball all the time. I should not be interrupting them too much with the, all the dribblings and passes, you know. I should be in the box scoring on hopefully first touch, if not more touches. and. Uh, I, I don't. I really. I don't care about this uh, touch thing. There was a discussion or whatever mm -hmm. uh, back in, I think, in October or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, so you see the media. You it went. It. Uh, yeah, of course. I get things <laughs> with me, uh, but it went a bit more quiet when I started scoring more and more goals. <laughs> you know, uh, then suddenly it was nothing more. Uh, but I don't care about this touch thing. I don't need to touch the ball really. I just have to be ready here in case the ball comes. And then if the ball comes, I have to be the first one there being clear here and be ready to, to shoot, basically. So you'll be looking forward to doing that at the, at the weekend against Inter Milan. I have to wish you good luck, man. Thank you so much. Good luck. Really pleasure talking to you. Thank good you. luck, man. Thank you Record so much. Record-breaking season. Thank you.